of the Council at 2 o'clock <coughs> on Wednesday, the 24th of March 2021. Can I please remind you all to switch your phone to silent for the duration of the meeting? In addition, can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings, which have been previously circulated? Namely, your microphone should be switched to mute unless you are speaking. The Democratic Service Services Officer will take a roll call at the start of this meeting of all members and officers. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand via Teams? I will assume that you have all read the paperwork before us today prior to the meeting. When speaking, please introduce yourself. I am Councillor John Warman, the Mayor. Jane, if you could take a roll call. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Aubrey. Present. Councillor Bamsey. Present. Councillor uh, Causey. Present, Jane. Councillor Clark. Present. Councillor Clement Williams. Present, Jane. Councillor Crowley. Councillor Crowley. Councillor uh, Davis, Arthur Davis. Present. Councillor Nicola Davis. Present, Jane. Councillor Oliver Davis. Present. Apologies from Councillor Ross Davis. Councillor Carlin Edwards. I think she's trying to connect, isn't she? Councillor Jamie Evans. Chris Ernall. Present. Councillor Freegard. Present. Councillor Goldsworthy. Present. Councillor Winford Griffiths. Windham Griffiths, present. Councillor Joe Hale. Present, Jane. Councillor Sean Harris. Councillor Harris. Councillor Mike Harvey. Yeah, present, Jane. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Present, Jane. Councillor Steve Hunt. I'm here, Jane. Councillor Hurley. Present, thank you. Councillor Chris James. Councillor Councillor Chris James. Yeah, present, so probably. Councillor Who James. Present, Jane. Councillor Chris Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Doreen Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Who Jones. Councillor J Jane Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Leanne Jones. Present, Jane. Apologies from Councillor Jones, Rob Jones. Councillor Scott Jones. Present, Jane. Councillor Dennis Keogh. Here, Jane. Councillor Noyle. Yes, I'm here, thank you, Jane. Councillor Latham. Present, Jane. Councillor Dean Lewis. Councillor Aunt Llewellyn. Personal, Jane, present. Councillor Alan Lockyer. Councillor Lockyer. Councillor McGrath. Councillor McGrath. Councillor Miller, John Miller. Present. Councillor Sandra Miller. Present, Jane. Apologies from Councillor Meisen. Councillor Del Morgan, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, present, all, thank you. Councillor Patterson. Present. Councillor Penry. Present, Jane. Councillor DM Peters. Present, Jane. Councillor Ross Phillips. Sorry, Rebecca Phillips. Councillor Rebecca Phillips. Councillor Mark Prothero. Present, thanks, Jane. Councillor Purcell. Present. Councillor Percy. Councillor Ahaman. Present. Councillor Peter Rees. Present, Jane. Councillor Renkis. Councillor Reynolds. Present. Councillor AJ Richards. Present, all present, Jane. Councillor Peter Richards. Present, Jane. Councillor Marcia Spooner. Present, all present. Councillor AJ Taylor. Present, Jane. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Present. Councillor, I've got uh, Mr Mayor. Councillor Whitelock. Present, thank you, Jane. Councillor Chris Williams. Present, thank you, Jane. 
Councillor Netwin Grave. Councillor Netwin Grave. Councillor Wood. Present. Councillor Woolcock. Present, all Mr. Mayor. Can I just double check, Councillor Crowley? Yes, I am here. Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, thank you. Councillor Sean Harris. Councillor Hugh Jones. Councillor Dean Lewis. Councillor Lockyer. He's trying to get in, Jane. Right. Councillor McGrath. Councillor Rebecca Phillips. Councillor Sean Percy. And Councillor Renkis. I'll now go on to officers. Karen Jones. Here. Nicola Pierce. Nicola Pierce. Sorry, present. Yeah, Will Jenkins. Present. Andrew Jarrett. Yeah, I'm present, Jane. Arlid Evans. Present. Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas. Craig Griffiths. Present, Jane. Sheena Reese. Present, Jane. Stacey Curran. Present. Mike Shaw. Present, Jane. Is there anyone's name now in the other I've missed off that is present and is taking part in today's meeting? You got me. I can see no indications, Mr. Mayor, so the roll call is completed. Thank you, Jane. Agenda item one, Mayor's announcements. It is with great sadness that I inform Council of the recent death of former Councillor Malcolm Isaac Jones, who represented Pelena Ward and was Mayor of the County Borough from 1998 to 1999. He was also a county councillor for a previous West Glamorgan County Council prior to reorganisation. Also, members will note the National Day of Reflection held yesterday. Could I ask the council to remember the many lives that have been lost to the COVID-19 pandemic? Our thoughts are with friends and families of those who have lost their lives. As a mark of respect, can I ask the Council to observe a minute silence? Thank you. Can I also ask Council to join with me and wish Councillor Ridian Mison a speedy recovery from his recent period of ill health. Agenda item two, members' interests. Are there any interests to declare? Please indicate by raising your electronic hand by Teams or indicate by the chat function and when called state details. The Democratic Services Officer will then forward an electronic version of a declaration of interest form for you to complete and email back to the officer. If you could firm any indications, Jane, please. Mayor, there's three with their hands raised. Karen Jones, Councillor Hurley and uh, Councillor Nigel Hunt. Uh, are they all delegated authority, um, interests? Hello, Councillor Hurley. Are you? Are you? Are you? Um... No, mine isn't. Sorry, but I wanted to remark on item one. 
Um, so if, if I'm allowed to do that, if you don't mind. Yeah, there we are. That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay thank you. Just uh, regarding Malcolm Jones, uh, on behalf of uh, myself and the residents of the ward, you know, I just like it noted that you know our thanks for his long service and the excellent work <laughs> he did in representing our ward. That's all. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Hunt, have you got an interest? You've got your hand up, Councillor yeah. Rachel Hunt. Yes, Jane. I, I'm, I'm going to raise a point and ask a question under item three. And I, you know, I want to declare an interest in that I'm a shop owner in the Aberavon Shopping Centre. And uh, the point I'm, I'm making doesn't directly relate to that, but uh, it is more relevant to retail in general. We, at the moment, we're doing delegated um, de members of interest at yes, the sir. moment, Councillor Hunt. Okay. This is individual personal in, uh, declarations of interest. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Callan Jones, Mr. Mayor, wants to speak. Yeah, I call now upon Callan Jones, Chief Executive, in regard to officers' declarations of interest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's an item on the agenda this afternoon, which is about the Council's pay policy. So I'm declaring an interest on behalf of the officers in the call uh, this afternoon. We'll be exiting the meeting for that item and we'll rejoin once Council has considered it. Uh, Mrs Sheena Reese and Mrs Jane Woodman ralph will remain in the meeting uh, while we withdraw. OK, thank you. Jane, could you please confirm that officers have left the meeting? Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm just waiting for officers to leave. Yes. I now can confirm that officers have left the meeting. Thank you. Agenda item three is the pay policy statement 2021-22. I call upon Councillor Doreen Jones, Cabinet Member for Corporate Services and Equalities to introduce the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the pay policy presentation, the Localism Act 2011 requires local authorities to produce a pay policy statement for each financial year. The pay policy statement was first developed and approved by this council in March 2012. As required by the legislation, the statement is reviewed at least annually and then brought before council for approval and publication prior to the 31st of March each year. Before you today is the pay policy statement for the year 2021-2022. The content has been updated to take account of any national or local pay related development. And these are summarized in the cover report. Members will note that negotiations that take place at a national level in respect of pay awards to apply from 1st of April 2021 have not been included. The Council will apply these pay awards as and when they are agreed and as set out in the respective pay agreements. The Localism Act requires a statement to set out the Council's policy in relation to a range of issues relating to the pay of the workforce, particularly in relation to senior staff and in relation to how their pay relates to the lowest paid within the workforce. The aim is to increase accountability, transparency and fairness in the setting of local pay within local government in Wales. The cover report sets out the pay multiples as at 31st of March 2021. Members will be interested to note that since the publication of the first pay policy statement in 2012, the gap between the lowest paid employees and the highest paid employees has reduced. 
In 2012, the chief executive earned 11 times more than the lowest paid employee. Now it is a ratio of 1 to 7.46. The average chief officer in 2012 earned seven times more than the lowest paid employee, and now it is a ratio of 1 to 5.1. The Head of Human Resources, Sheena Rees, is available to answer any questions that members may have in relation to the pay policy statement. The recommendation is set out on page six of your pack of papers, and this is to approve the pay policy statement for 2021-2022 for publication on the Council's website. I recommend this to the Council, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Members, are there any questions or comments? Please raise your electronic hand or indicate via chat function, and I will call upon you in turn. Some indicated? Yeah. Councillor Steve Hunt. Pardon? Yeah. Oh, Nigel. Yes, yeah, Nigel Hunt. Can I ask I was, um I was up first, but it's okay. Yeah. Oh th thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um Okay. Can I take this opportunity to welcome you to the chamber and both you and Dell and your mayor of Rain, you've both been very eloquent the last couple of years, so I look forward to to you and you in council going forward. Thank you. Um with regards to item three today, pay policy, um, when I was reading through the notes, I noticed that um, the council spends 47% of its gross expenditure on its workforce and its payroll. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of money. That's nine figures. That's like two, over £200 million. Mm. So um, I done a bit of research on that and I went to find uh, guidance for councillors. Um, from the Local Government Association. And uh, in their introduction, they, they said that we can expect most councils to be in excess of 50% of the gross revenue expenditure. So I thought, well, I just thought of 47%. That caught my ear in the first place. So we are 3% below that. So if we got a, our gross revenue expenditure is 400 42 million pound so three percent of that is 13 million pound so i was wondering where we spend that money that 13 million pound if most councils spend 50 percent or in, in excess of 50 percent of their of their revenue budget so um i was wondering maybe it was down to the gva i know we have a a very low GVA, as, as has been pointed out in the city deal around here, probably about 70% of the national average. I thought maybe it's that, or maybe is it because we don't employ enough staff? Because I know that some of our services we're very poor on, street care, you know, the prevalence of rats at the moment is causing us a lot of headache, especially in the, the old urban areas. So I just would like to find out really where why we um we are not spending fifty percent of our revenue on our workforce. And secondly, I was thinking I was looking furthermore in this guidance. <clears throat> they give examples of what other councils are doing um to try and stretch out their in their their workers' uh, salaries. So I know that we do some things with the high streets, uh, like in the East End of London. Um Bark, Dagenham and Bark, Bark in. They like they do deals with the high streets, so the the employees, the workers, the council workers have discounts there. So I was wondering, what do we do in respect to that to help our workers get by, and can we liaise with some of our other partners, like um, Celtic Leisure? Can we get like discounts for our workers in in the leisure centres to keep them fit and healthy? Public transport. I know that we subsidise in a lot of public transport. I know some of our workers travel. You know, you go to work and have worked throughout this pandemic by catching public transport. 
can we negotiate some discount for our workers on that? Because I think we have to think a bit more creatively in these times. So basically, I'd like to know what the two questions I'd like to ask is, why are we only spending, why are we spending 47% and not 50% of our gross revenue expenditure? And where's that 13 million pound going? And secondly, what are we doing to help our, our workers, our workforce, some of some of who are doing an outstanding job in in adverse conditions? So um, those are the two questions I'd like to ask today. Okay, thank, thank you for Smith. those questions. Councillor, I'll um, refer the questions that you've asked to Sheena this, please. Okay, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the first question, I will have to refer to the Director of Finance. I'm afraid that that I'm I'm just not in a position um, to provide information on um, the detail of the Council's budget. Um, so that matter I will pick up with the Director of Finance um, and particularly in relation to um, the, the 3% um, um, and how we're spending that money. Um, in, in terms of the, the second question, um, in relation to um, the, the measures that we have in place to support our workforce, um, we do already offer a discount in relation to Celtic Leisure. Um, the Health and Wellbeing Group um, was set up to offer um, employees the opportunity to join the Health and Wellbeing Group and through that they can access a range of benefits which include discounts for high street stores. Um, we also offer discounts in relation to council facilities. Um, we don't have a scheme in relation to transport. Um, we do have um, the Cycle to Work initiative um, which offers employees the opportunity to um, access um, bicycles and um, cycling equipment, um, which they can pay for then via uh, salary sacrifice. Um, so we do have a range of benefits um, focusing on our workforce. Um, in terms of in, in terms of the the remuneration package that that we offer our employees, um, we base um, the remuneration package on the recommendation. Um, from the, the national pay bargaining. So that, that's something that's set for us through negotiation at a national level. Um, so um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Sheena. Maybe I'll message you outside of the meeting if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. No problem at all. Yes, thanks a lot. It's the mayor, you muted. Councillor Stephen, next, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Sheena, and uh, for the responses there. Um, I, I'm happy with the, the item today on the pay policy. Uh, it's clear that uh, the remuneration uh, body uh, set uh, pays and wages and structures. Uh, I welcome the gap closing between the lower paid and the highest paid, remembering, of course, responsibilities go with certain jobs, hence why uh, the value of a pay scale is put upon it. Uh, I would like to see the gap closing further in future years. And I don't know whether through council that uh, we can lobby uh, these bodies who set the, the pay scales going forward. And I'm not referring to ra the rises that they may have, but in, in, in reference to pay rises, I have said this for the 14 years, and I will continue to say it, uh, the system is a, is set with percentage pay rises. Therefore, those already on high level pays will always have more money than those on the lower pays. I still believe that it should be a monetary rise across the board when pay rises are given. And that's what I would like to see this authority and other authorities take forward. I think it's in our hands that we can lobby 
those that set pay scales and levels to have a fairer pay rise structure. Uh, I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. I don't feel that the percentage pay rise, Gina, is appropriate given the, the higher paid people more money all the time at the expense of the lower paid. But I do welcome this report with the closing of the gap. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Question. Mayor. Yeah, it's just a point. I thought as cabinet member for street care, I come back um, on Councillor Hunt's comments about um, street care services are poor. Um, I think obviously we've had austerity for a number of years and throughout austerity, it's the environment directed have had the deepest cuts. So I, I like to just point out, I think our street care teams, the cuts they've um, had, have done a fabulous service in my ward recently in the floods. They were absolutely fantastic and they went above and beyond what they were supposed to do. And, and they had nothing but praise from, from the residents in my ward. So I do, um, you know, take issue with Councillor Hunt's comments. I think our street care people do a fantastic job. And, you know, I just like to put that on record. Thank you. Recommendation. Pardon? Oh, OK. Councillor Hunt, do you want to come back in? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, no, I, I've got no issues with the workforce, uh, um, Klaus Harvey, or the, the, street care, the street care workforce. I think they're fantastic. I just think that we haven't got enough numbers and um, some of the issues in our wards are really difficult at the moment that need addressing. And again, I can speak to you outside of this um, the meeting, but some of the issues I got in Aberavon this week are alarming. So I'm not at the workforce, I'm fantastic. I stand up for them. I don't think we have enough of them. And I wonder with the tools that they've got. That, that's the, the issue I have. Thank you. Keep our discussion outside the meeting, uh, Councillor Hunt. Thank you. Councillor Llewellyn. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Alan, Alan Llewellyn, you've indicated. Oh, sorry. Yes, Chair. I, actually, I could have put my hand on because I, I, I indicated before Nigel added his. Uh, uh, sorry. Point there, but uh, I, I, yes, uh, the point I was going to make was I think it's clear from Nigel's, uh, Councillor Nigel Hunt's original comments that uh, you, you know that in, in fact he was very supportive of the workforce. It's just that they're working in, in very very difficult circumstances following yes, uh, the years of austerity, and of course the particular pressures that they've been working under during this very very difficult uh, year that's uh, that's just gone past. Okay, thank you, Councillor Clement Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wasn't going to speak on this item, but I, I would just like to say that um, I would like to second um, the, the uh, thanks from uh, Councillor Mike Harvey and just add that um, it was our street care guys uh, who during the COVID crisis have supported our waste guys um, and gals, I should say, um, to do to do the, their jobs. Um, they have uh, switched. Um, they do an amazing job and I understand the other councillors are saying that the staff are great but there's just not enough of them. Uh, bearing in mind the campaign that they have going on at the moment about not increasing council tax, I would just like once again to ask what alternatives or options does he have? Um, not, not for you to answer today because uh, we can take that outside the room but I would just like to say what other options do you have and what other services are you going to cut so that we can add to the street care there's only so much money we have. Councillor Fuellen um, mentioned pressures. Um, yes, we have pressures everywhere. And um, at the moment, nobody wants to cut anything. Nobody wants to raise council tax. Um, our utility bills are going up. Our budgets have been cut year on year for the last decade. So let's see, let's see what the alternative options are, please, because um, we, our officers, um, you know, they keep getting praise as well. However, our officers uh, along with us are, are giving us options as to what we can do. So um, I, I, I'm not really sure how you can 
say that it's not good enough from officers or from staff, but then say how wonderful they are. It doesn't quite, it doesn't quite compute to me. I want to know what your alternative budget or your alternative options to increase street care services would be. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Patterson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, very similar along the lines of uh, Councillor Clement Williams. I mean, we've just been through the budget setting um, period from the last budget setting period. It's a period of a whole year where we work out yeah. these budgets. And I was just wondering where, um, where any ideas uh, have been put forward from Councillor Hunt? If he wants to have more staff, then surely he should have some ideas to put forward during the budget setting. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, you want to come back? You're on mute, Councillor Hunt. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, from, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, from the budget meeting, I highlighted that we had £19 million in general reserves. Um, but the question I'm asking today is, why are we only spending 47% of our gross revenue expenditure yeah. on, our, on our workforce when, you, when the average is 50% um, in councils? That, that's the guidance that we're getting. So that was the question there. And in reply to uh, Councillor Clement Williams and Councillor Padson, I don't really want I don't really want my residents phone messaging me, sending me letters, sending me emails, phoning me up about rats continuously. We've got a big problem in Aberavon. As you know, Councillor Patterson, we brought this up in planning. The HMOs. Right? And so that is the issue that I'm trying to bring up here today. Yeah. That we have street care problems in our old urban areas, yeah. and part of it is because we don't have enough staff. So I'm addressing the problem there. Can I just uh, thank you, Councillor? Can I just remind you, uh, members, that this is about the pay policy that's before us today in the report. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Councillor Clement Williams. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Just to um, come back to, as you say, the pay policy. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if Councillor Hunt's aware of the workforce agreement that was worked out between Council and the trade unions a number of years ago. And our staff um, decided that in order to try to keep services, that they and councillors and officers all had a pay freeze for a number of years. And that is possibly, I'm not, I, I wasn't um, in finance at the time, and maybe Sheena can help you, but that could be why we're a couple of percent lower than some of the other councils, because our staff do care about our residents as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, and if you come in back, can I just remind you that we're just talking now about the pay policy. There are issues that are going outside of what we're supposed to be speaking about today. Can I just remind you of that, please? Yeah, of course, Chair. Um, it's £30 million pound we're talking about here. 50% um, of 442 million is 221 million, whereas 47% is 13 million less than that. So I don't know what pay freeze is. 13 million pounds. I'm asking, that's the question I'm asking. Why are we only spending 47% of our budget on our workforce? That's the question that I want answered. Sheena, you. Um... You you uh, you answered some of the questions before about this on the pay policy. Have you got anything else to say about this, about Councillor Hunt's um, question on this? But I, I, I just wanted to confirm that our rates of pay are in in line with the, the nationally agreed set of rates of pay. So, so we follow the national pay scale. So we're not paying below the national pay scale. Um, at single status back in 1997, every council um was required to look at their own terms and conditions of employment so whilst we follow that we apply the national pay scale 
um, all our alliances, so things like overtime rates, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, we set as sovereign employers, so every council will differ slightly in its pay arrangements. So undoubtedly, there are going to be councils that um, pay higher rates of pay than, than we do in terms of overtime. Um, we sought to reduce terms and conditions um, as an alternative to compulsory redundancies back in 2013. And that's that was a deal that we agreed with our trade unions. So undoubtedly, there is a some of this is accounted for in terms of differences in the overall remuneration package. Um, it's not accounted for in, in the pace bind because that follows the nationally agreed pace bind. And there may be differences in terms of the size of our workforce in some areas. Um, most services do benchmark the size of their services. Um, so that's a, that's a question that that if there is a particular service and you seem to be talking about street care, I can find out more information from the head of street care in relation to that. Um, so I don't know if that's that's helpful, but that's the the information I can give you off the top of my head today. Thank you. Uh, we've had quite a good discussion on this. I, I now refer members to a recommendation on page six of the report. Can I ask for a proposal and seconder? I, I move, Mr. Mayor. I second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If you don't, do not indicate to the contrary by raising your electronic hand, it will be assumed that you are in favour of recommendation. Jane will confirm any indications and advise the council whether recommendations have been approved or not. I can see no indication to the contrary, Mr. Mayor, so that recommendation has been approved. Thank you. Jane, could you please call officers back into the meeting? Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'm just calling officers back in, Mr. Mayor, if you just give me. Yes. Uh, two minutes till they till I can Thank confirm you. they are all back in. Yes, officers are back in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Now go on to agenda item four, which is the annual report of the Democratic Services Committee, the 219-2020. I call upon Councillor Del Morgan, Chair of the Democratic Services Committee, to introduce the report. Mr Mayor. Uh, I will be brief as this item is presented to Council as a formality, uh, although members are welcome, of course, to ask any appropriate questions. Uh, as Democratic Services Committee Chair, I instigated the, uh, the notion of a Democratic Services Committee annual report some three years or so ago, with the intention of establishing a good practice activity for this Council. It is a means for the committee members to demonstrate their actions and activities during the year in question and for these to be recognised and recorded at full council. Now, in addition to the work of the full Democratic Services Committee, members can also see that a number of standing and task and finish groups have also been very busy undertaking the various tasks allocated to them. So I won't go into detail here, Mr Mayor. It's all there in the report for members to see. Please note, though, that this report does refer to the civic year 2019 to 2020. So following any questions, Mr Mayor, I'll simply move the Council should note and endorse the report. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Members, are there any questions or comments? Please raise your electronic hand to indicate via the chat function and I will call upon you in turn. I can see no indications, Mr. O Councillor John Miller has a question, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Miller, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is relation, in relation to the Disability Audit Working Group. Can I ask what progress has been made in uh, implementing the recommendations of this group, please? Mr Mayor, um, members will see from the 2019 uh, 20 report that the work conducted by the group uh, chaired by Councillor Sandra Miller had, be, had brought forward a number of recommendations which full council did uh, later endorse. Um, 
I will have to refer to officers to see where we are indeed in the, in the, um, the progress of each of those items. Um, I know that a number of items relating to the council chamber and building have been um, uh, looked upon very recently, just prior to the pandemic. Others were uh, relating to IT issues, but um, uh, in, in relation to where we are today, uh, I'm afraid I'd have to go back to officers and ask for, for the information to be uh, provided following the meeting, uh, Mr. Mayor. Do you want to speak? Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Morgan. And uh, Stacey, you want to say something on that, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just to reiterate uh, Councillor Morgan's um, statements there, really, unfortunately, due to COVID, the progress on the um, the audit group was paused. Um, we do have a set of recommendations moving us on to phase two of the um, audit, which we hope to resume as soon as we were able to. Um, and as Councillor Morgan said, the recommendations were all in place and we're hoping to revisit them as soon as we were able to. And it is on the forward work programme of the Democratic Services Committee to revisit as soon as we were able. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. I now refer members to the recommendations on page 80 of the report. Can I ask for a proposal and a seconder? I move, Mr. Mayor, I that second. Council notes the yeah. and endorse the report. Thank you again. If you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your electronic hand, it be assumed that you are in favour of the recommendation. Jane will confirm if there's any indications and advise the Council. I can see no indication to the country, Mr. Mayor, so that uh, recommendation has been approved. Thank you. On to agenda item five, notice of motion. There are no notice of motions that have been received. And on agenda item six, any questions, which is under rule 9-2. No questions have been received. I now go on to agenda item seven, urgent items. Uh, on this issue item, I call upon Councillor Ted Latham, leader of the council, to address the council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it gives me great pleasure uh, as leader of Neath Potorba Council to take a short time to pay tribute to uh, our outgoing Director of Education, Mr. Alid Evans. Alid has been an employee with Neath Potorba Council since January 2000 when he joined as an Education Development Officer following a successful teaching career in West Wales, where he began teaching in 1984 at Ascol Gunrav Llandesil. Alid's drive soon saw him become Deputy Head at the same school before, before taking on the Head Teacher role in two different schools. Carmarthenshire County Council's loss was certainly our gain here in Neath Port Talbot. As Alid continued his career progression, becoming Head of Learning and Inclusion, and of course then becoming our Director of Education. Alid has been a great credit to the Council and has represented us on many outside bodies and has always strived for the best education and educational facilities for all pupils of Neath Port Talbot. We will all agree that whenever we have wanted information, Alid was always on hand to give us the advice and guidance that we needed, and he always gave that in a truly professional manner. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I did uh, try to find out some additional information on Alid with regards to his interests and hobbies, uh, and I must tell everybody that this was not easy. Alid is a very private man, but I do know now that as he moves towards retirement, he can continue to follow the Welsh football team on their travels around the world, uh, COVID permitting, of course. And with his beloved Swansea City, although he will no doubt be dis bitterly disappointed with the result last Saturday when they fell to defeat against their arch rivals Cardiff. Alid is also an avid rugby supporter following his beloved Scarlets, but I am sure we won't hold this against him and we hope that our nearest region, the Ospreys, 
continue with their recent form and provide some stern resistance in the future. Away from sport, Alid is an accomplished writer and poet, and some of you may not know this, but he has won several chairs at Eisteddfods for his work. At this point, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pay a personal tribute and thank to Alid for the help, support and guidance he gave me personally um, through a very difficult period uh, a couple of years ago, which lasted for about 18 months in one of the schools I was involved in. Um, his help and assistance there, um, I, am, I am truly grateful for. Uh, Alid, we all know that you were a big family man and that you will now relish being able to spend more time with the family. But can I, on behalf of myself and everyone involved with Newport Harbour County Borough Council, thank you and wish you sincerely all the very best for your immediate future. Thank you, Alid, and thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. I call upon Councillor Peter Rees, Cabinet Member for Education, to address the Council, followed by Councillor Alan Llewellyn, Leader of Plaid Cymru, and then Councillor Scott Jones, Leader of the Independent Democratic Group. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to fully endorse all that the, the Leader has said about Aled. I've worked with Alid now for a number of years and uh, he's always been a highly professional a person to deal with, very friendly, always supportive of the staff and teachers in the school. Um, his, his time at Neathford Talbot has resulted in Neathford Talbot having one of the best, if not the best, education directorates in Wales. The, the programme that has been provided over the years on 21st century schools has been superb and has benefited hundreds of children across the county borough. Aled, you have been exemplary. I'm proud to call you my friend. And I wish you all the best for a very, very long and happy retirement. Please enjoy your time with the Scarlets, with uh, the Swansea City. And I know that you have a passion for, for your music and Sp uh, Bruce Springsteen. So enjoy that. All the best, Aled, and thank you very much for all your service. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I want to thank Mr. Aled Evans and Mr. Sanneth for the leadership of the Adjan Addysg and the leadership of the Adjan Addysg and the leadership of the Adjan Addysg. I want to thank you for your leadership and your leadership in the Adjan Addysg and the leadership of the Adjan Addysg and the leadership of the Adjan Addysg. I want to thank you for your leadership and your leadership in the Adjan Addysg and your leadership in the Adjan and I got Saul to go to New York as a photo there or not. I often the author of a book can no guess if in number so no, Akbal can go there that have a joyful. So I could even all let him say, girl, I'm sure be it hell there, a rich and he didn't need. The Shivra you don't stand at you, Scaveni, a Gavasha Nidalini, on big game as ones a humbly human. He took a volley to have it, a Dominate go there, year to vote all. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Mayor. I would also like to thank Mr. Alan Evans for his long service in the Education Department, latterly serving, of course, as our Director of Education. It's essential for the local authority to place the interests of the pupils at the heart of the education service and to support the teachers and all the staff to provide the best possible education. That was Alice's principle at all times, including in the field of Welsh medium education. But we often had some lively discussions on the best way of achieving it. I would like to thank him for all the support that he gave me on a personal level and also as a councillor and governor. I don't think Alid will be properly retiring. Uh, I'm sure there'll be future 
uh, interests and challenges. And also there will be books to be read and to be written. And perhaps not this year, but there will be Swans and Wales football games to, to follow. Uh, not to mention the Scarlets, as has just been said. So thank you, Arled, and best wishes for the future. Cheers. Yeah. Councillor Scott Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to echo the comments made by the leader of council and the leader of Plaid. Uh, and on that note, on behalf of the independent democratic group, can I take this opportunity to thank Mr. Evans for his dedication and commitment to public services here in East Port Albert over numerous years and wish him a very happy and healthy retirement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Sonia Lello, as you indicated. I wished to uh, send my good wishes and thanks for his service to Alid as well. I know he's a very valued uh, member of staff that we've had and respected across the sector, uh, having worked with him outside of the council for years previous to this. And I, I know that uh, Andrew has big shoes to fill, and uh, but he's been trained well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Just before I ask Ali to respond, I just wanted to say, as a mayor, I associate myself and now other council doers, where councillors, with the tributes that have been paid to Ali this afternoon, and uh, I would just add on behalf of the council as a mayor as well to wish you all the best for the future and um, uh, had a happy association with you and your professionalism as a director of education. Thank you very much. If you are, I would ask you to respond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, I'd like to thank everybody for their best wishes. Um, as Mr. Mayor has indicated, um, we do have a common interest and that is running and um, it, it does feel a bit of a marathon at the moment. But um, I think has, as you have indicated, you know, hopefully there will be a time for rest um, ahead. But I'd like to say um, a, a three or four things that are important to be um, put on record. Firstly, I'd like to thank all um, elected members without exception um, for their support and encouragement over the 21 years that I've spent in Neath Port Albert. Very happy years, uh, and I certainly appreciate the support that I've had. I've got nothing but respect for all elected members without exception. I've got respect for your dedication, for your sense of duty, and for your sense of service. Um, I, I said to myself, before today's meeting that I wouldn't mention anybody, but I think it is going to be um, difficult for me not to mention Councillor Peter Rees, with whom I've had a very close relationship as my portfolio um, cabinet member. Um, some of you may have um, <clears throat> may have it difficult to see beyond Peter's growl. And as Ali used to say, um, he needs his dog biscuits at times but he's been a very dedicated and a very committed um, cabinet member for education and a very challenging one, both in terms of the challenge that he gives us as officers, but also within the council chamber at the same time. And um, I certainly um, feel that that friendship that we've had has been a professional one and has been one that is in the best interests of the children and young people of Neath Port Talbot. Secondly, I'd like to thank my, um, my corporate colleagues. Uh, again, I've got nothing but respect and admiration for their probity and for their integrity, for the way that they exemplify the best practices that you would expect within local government. And lastly, I'd like to thank um, the staff that I've worked with <clears throat> and alongside. Again, I've got nothing but respect for the commitment that they show, for the care that they exercise in their work, and for the calibre 
of services that they deliver. Um, before I finish, I am going to refer to two literary references that have a direct um, trace back to Neith Patalbert. Um, the first one is from the Mabinogi, um, where in the second branch of the Mabinogi, and I don't know how many of you know, but the Mabinogi were first written under the commission of Hopkin Ab Thomas, who lived in Anisvorgan. And those of you who know the Anisvorgan interchange will know that there's a riverside caravan park there. Well, it's on that site that Hopkin Ab Thomas um, used to live back in the uh, 14th century. And it was under his commission that the Mabinogi were first written as Llevirko Hergest. And within that, um, that branch or, or within that collection of tales, um, you will be aware that um, Bendigaidvran in the story of Branwen sets his body across the Shannon to allow his, his soldiers to cross. And he states, Avo Ben Bid Bont. In other words, if you want to be a great leader, you must also facilitate those who are part of your service. And um, I've always seen my role as one of uh, enabling others to give of their best, be that within the school sector or within the youth sector, within our libraries or within other services. It's very much about enabling others and creating the conditions, creating the environment that allows others to thrive. I think that's what we do well as a local authority. I think that's what we do well as um, a directorate um, within the local authority. And lastly, I'm going to take you to um, Aber Pergum. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to take you to the late 15th and early 16th century um, and a poet called Jorweth Vangloid who said like this, Nach veiriwch i forid, na dŵr hallt heb fynd o'r hyd. That message is about don't set your sights too far, don't look to navigate to the, boil, to, to, to the wild open sea without first of all understanding what your local context is about. And again, I think that is something that we do well as a local authority. We understand our communities, we understand where they um, are located within our national policy, within our national vision, and also within that global vision. And I think those are, are two messages that we need to take forward um, into our um, our work go you know within um, Neath Patalbert. First of all, we have to facilitate um, others to achieve the best they can. And secondly, look at what's local. Let's make that work, and then look beyond that and have that ambition and have that vision. Bethi diach mawr iawn i chi gyd, mae di bod yn bleser mawr um, cael cyd weithio gyda chi um, a gobeithio gweld chi ar y liberty neu ble bynnag mewn blynyddoedd i ddod. Thank you all. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the liberty. I'll see you in other places and we can share some, um, some you know, laughs and, um, and jokes in the future. Diolch mor. Bye bye. Thank you, Alan, for that wonderful response. Councillors and officers, thank you for your participation today. That ends the business for today. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bye, all.